Hey guys, Jeremy here with Simple Little Life. I'm sitting in front of the X-Tool D1 Pro with a 40 watt diode laser head on it. There's two reasons why I was really interested in a laser. The first one was for etching knives, and this thing does a fantastic job. The other reason I wanted a laser was so that I could cut leather sheaths. The way that I used to do it before is I would have templates, and for every knife I would come up with a paper template, make sure that worked, try it on leather, and if it worked I would turn that, I'd paste that to cardboard so it'd have a rigid template. Well now what I'm doing is I'm starting to convert all those files to digital. Currently I'm just using SketchUp and I'm a little clunky at it, but it is working. And what I will do is I'll actually do my samples out of a piece of paper. So you can set these machines to cut whatever material you want. So I'll just kind of mock it up, do a drawing, bring it into the machine, cut it out of paper, fold it around the blade, see if it works. Obviously you have to take into account that the, the folds are not as tight with leather because it's thick. I'll show you how, I don't know how many ounces of leather this is, but it's about that thick. But we'll quickly double check this sheath that I've designed and cut it out of paper. And if it all looks good, then we will go ahead and do it in leather. I've got this honeycomb grid. It's got a piece of aluminum underneath it, so I'm not worried about cutting or burning the table. And I'll just jump into software here. We've got a framing option, and what that will do is we'll just run the laser around the work area so we can see if we've got our workpiece centered correctly. And then hit this. That looks great. So those crosshairs on the back are essentially the work area that is required to cut out this piece. Now what I'll do is I'll turn on the air assist. Framing complete. I'll hit the start button. Put on our safety specs. Just kidding, those are for me, not you. And we hit the start button. Now for some reason I have an extra line up top there, and so it does an extra cut. That was in my drawing, some error when I went to export it. And then there's also another one right over here. That one right there. But that's basically it. And we can see what our sheath is going to look like. I think that's pretty slick. Now one thing you have to remember when you're making these sheaths is that you cut the proper side. This is the smoother side of the leather, this is the rougher side, this is just edge tan leather. And you wanna make sure it's laid out so that when you go to fold it, so for this one here, this would be the good side of the leather. No, this is the good side of the leather. Yes, yes, so this is the good side of the leather, this is the inside of the leather. This gets folded down, we'll sew that on there like that. And then this will get folded in there. And then also, we have our welt cut out. And this is really nice because you can make this welt whatever size you want, and it matches perfectly the curvature of the sheath. Just like that. So this template's gonna work fantastic for me. We're gonna go ahead and put our leather in here. Now the one thing is this stinks and it creates a lot of smoke. I do not have a dust extraction set up for this thing yet. So let's get this leather clamped in here and uh, we'll get cutting. So you can kind of see the burn marks from where I've been testing out some other sheaths. And that's fine, don't think it really hurts anything. So we're gonna put our piece of leather in here. I'm gonna get it roughly, I'll just line it up with these bars that are going across. And X-Tool sends these little things. It's a little aluminum with this bar magnet on the bottom. And they drop into the honeycomb there and it holds the leather down. They're actually really quite handy. Especially when your leather's been rolled up for a while like this one has, it's nice to be able to get it nice and flat. And I think that should be good. So we're gonna clear our hold downs, and again, this would only apply if you actually are using hold downs. So now I need to go back and change my settings. So I'll pick this and we're gonna cut. Right now we're gonna go, I use three millimeter pine plywood because they don't actually have a uh, setting for leather. I think that should be good. So hit the start button and here's like the framing control panel. Essentially you can pick which corner of the job you start from. I always like to start from the middle. Um, you could pick this one and then essentially just move this to the outer edge. That might almost be an easier one for this type of work. It all depends. If I was trying to place it in the middle of an object exactly 
and engrave on that object, then it's nice to go in the middle. Sometimes I'll measure it out, make a mark, and I'll start there. But for this, we may as well just go to this far corner of the work, and that way I'll trace it out this way. So let's see what we got there. So go to framing, I'll hit the start button. We are good. We were within the confines of the leather. So we're ready to cut. Again, this is gonna get stinky. Hit the start button. And then put the air assist on. Safety specs. And we cut. Oh, look at that. That is nasty. That is really gross. Gone ahead and opened some windows. Alright, let's see how it did. Oh yeah. A little bit sticking right here and a little bit right there. So we'll just get our knife and cut that. Just for reference, that was one minute thirty-six seconds. Alright, so back on the workbench and just take a little exacto knife and just kind of trim this little bit right here. That was all it took. I could adjust the settings. I could go maybe just a little bit slower. You can see how much didn't get burned through there. Now the one thing I was concerned about is all the charring on the edge of the leather. You can see how badly charred it is, but believe it or not, it's actually a super quick fix. Just take some sandpaper, a couple passes and it's gone. I thought that was pretty cool because that was the one part I was like, yeah, I don't know if I really like that. How's that going to take an edge coat? But uh, it's actually basically a non-issue. Just sand this down. Now for me, this has been a, a longer process than I thought to get my templates digitized. But that's just because I don't use drawing software often at all. I'm actually really bad at it, but a little clunking around and I can, I can do it. What I generally do is I'll take a picture of the knife, bring that into SketchUp, I use the layout feature, and then just kind of draw curves a little bit wider than the belly of the knife, and that's how I arrive with this. And you can essentially just match the curve of the knife with this line here, and then copy, paste it, flip it 180 degrees, line it up with this edge, and now we've got a sheath basically, and move this stuff around like I said, it's, it, I'm not fast at it, but it's not hard to do. I'm just getting this cleaned up, and the rest of it is just how you do any other leather sheath. We'll go ahead and finish this one out. I'm not going to get too crazy in detail on leather sheaths. It's not necessarily what this video is about, but you just think about... The hardest part for me was getting nice, clean cuts, especially around a curve like this. Usually I'd be using my X-Acto knife, and it was multiple tries, multiple tries. Just to be able to have something like that cut out, so clean, perfectly concentric, and then your welt fits in there absolutely flawlessly. Absolutely love that. So the two things that I was really interested in about that laser have both proven to be as good, probably better than what I was hoping. It etches so nicely, way better than I was expecting it to, and it cuts leather out really well. I'll walk you through some of the steps that I use for sheaths. There's multiple different ways you can do sheaths. This isn't necessarily the best way. It's not the only way. It's just the way that I do it.
So as we finish up the last few stages of this sheath, I just want to say thank you for watching and thank you to Xtool for sponsoring this video. They don't pay me to make these videos, but they did send me the machine for free. And again, it was my curiosity in these certain areas of my knife making. And this thing has just performed way better than I expected. If you might be interested in getting yourself a laser such as this, I've got a link in the description. It's an affiliate link and it also gets you a discount. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, hopefully this was educational. If you have any questions, comments, just leave them below in the comment section and I will do my best to answer them. We'll see you in the next video. Cheers.